All right, hey everybody, before we get into the video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the painting here. In case you don't know, this is Echo from Arcane, and I painted this entire thing, well, almost the entire thing here in Procreate, start to finish, it's about like 95 to 99% of it was here. And I wanna quickly show you which brushes I used because I use my own custom brushes for this. So in my Ergo Index Pack, you'll see the Sharp Detail Flat Brush. That's what I used for basically all of the sketch lines here. I have the Magic Almedal Dury brush grit. This is just a tweaked version of the uh, really cool brush that's in Almedal Dury's brush pack that I have also included where to get them in my brush pack as well, just to be you know completely transparent. And you can see I use that for some of the shading once I added texture and then for this entire tattoo that he has here for his hourglass tattoo. For another textural thing, you can see here, I added a little bit of this cool texture that you see a lot in a lot of concept art these days. And I wish I added more of it, but you can find it here included in Procreate by default in this vintage section. And it's really this newsprint texture here. And you can experiment with some other textures. I kind of created a little bit of a variation here myself. And that gives you that really cool kind of dotted texture there. Another really important brush in my Ergo Index pack is what I use to start with all the grayscale shading that you'll see me do in a second. And for that, I used my light and heavy glaze brushes. So that's what I use to get the base for all of the shadows that you see here and for a lot of the lighting as well. Oh yeah, you can find my brush pack on Gumroad, link in the description. There'll be a little thing over here, a little card, and uh, they'll probably be in the comments as well. Hello everyone, this is Ergo Josh, and welcome to this video about how to find out if you're improving with your art. These are some really rare signs that I have noticed with myself over the past year, and I wanna share them with you all because it is super encouraging to be able to identify with these things. Sometimes, Art can be extremely painful and tough, no matter how good you have gotten. Trust me, we are feeling it too. So let's go. First one, you feel like somebody else made the piece that you're working on. Now this usually happens at the end of your piece and it is quite a rare and surreal feeling. And it sometimes feels kind of bad because you want to be unique. You want to be the one to have done the thing. You want it to be yours, but letting that go and finding a way to focus on improving skills sometimes requires you to abandon your own uniqueness for a little bit. This is because sometimes art can be so complicated, you just need to figure out, can you do something that is being done by a lot of people that is marketable right now? And then once you get comfortable with that, then you can start to add your own flair. This is also usually met by a feeling that you can never make this piece again. This is the best you can do. It was a complete accident. You should just give up now while you're doing well. And that is not true. I guarantee you that feeling will come time and time again, but it is really just the beginning of noticing how much or how little control you have over your artwork, because eventually you'll start to see that all of this experience is just beyond your own level of comprehension all at once. And you just kind of keep going and it just works out for you in the end. And you learn to just trust the process. Number two, you're going to start to notice that art you thought was amazing a few years ago. Isn't that really amazing anymore? You're going to start to see subtle mistakes. You're going to start to see errors, especially if you focus on one topic really well and you get really good beyond the person you're looking at. This usually happens with anatomy like me, for example, or when it comes to form, I'm obsessed with 3D form and an artist that I'm looking at right now that I still love. It's starting to be obvious that they don't really pay attention to the 3D form of what they do as much. I'm noticing some uneven eyes and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm starting to see areas that they struggle with a little bit compared to areas that they are masterful at. And it's still incredible. Don't get me wrong. I still love to look at this work. But instead of feeling like it takes the level of engineering to travel to Mars to be able to do that painting, it feels like, oh, it just takes the effort it takes to travel around the world. Much less difficult, but still very impressive at the same time. Now, the third thing is that you become obsessed with artists that you overlooked before. Whatever new thing you're interested in, you're going to start to find artists who have mastered it. And you might find artists who break down a topic in a perfect way for you to uniquely understand it. This has happened with me, with two artists in particular lately, Sasha Tutuseva and Sasha Frantiseva, and how they work with color. Now, I always thought they were great artists, but to me now, they feel legendary because the way they think about color I'm noticing is really tied to form. And it's so obvious that so many 3D artists love to sculpt based off of their designs 
because it, they're so clear and transparent with how they break down the planes of the faces that they paint. And I'm able to use that to understand how to apply color because I love faces, I love portraits, and I love the forms. And so now I can directly map color knowledge to those things that I already know really well by studying how they work. And sometimes you're not even going to be skilled enough to understand how skilled someone is. Have you ever looked at a random video on social media where someone's doing something crazy? You'll just you'll never even try it. But because it's filmed, it's really cool to see. And then you look at the comments and then everyone's like, this person's terrible. This is wrong. This is against OSHA guidelines. And you're just like, wow, something that can be so impressive can be so wrong because you just know nothing about that topic. But even in one day of research, you can eventually become somebody that notices signs that someone is skilled. And this happened with me when it comes to fish cutting and preparing videos. These are pretty gory videos, but there's a lot of videos of people hunting really gigantic fish. My favorite ones are the Japanese tuna fish cutters, and they are just expertly slicing and dicing this fish up to be eventually served in a tiny little piece of sushi, right? and they are making incredible decisions to avoid hurting themselves and to make the maximum yield that I wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't watched like 30 videos prior. <laughs> uh, it's, it's way too easy to get addicted to those. Now, the fourth sign is that you might start to see less engagement, but you get more comments from artists that you respect. Now, this is a really, really fun thing because it teaches you also to value more meaningful interaction than just the numbers, the masses, right? So if you're blessed to have any artists who are more skilled than you or any artists that you admire follow you, you'll notice that they will be the one to like your boring studies because they look at it and they're like, I've been there. This person is following in my footsteps. This person is on the journey and I'm proud of them. That's what other artists are thinking when they like those things. And it is really nice to be able to see that. And sometimes now I'll just go in and instead of looking at how many likes I have, I'll look at how many artists that I also follow liked my work. And that is really exciting to see. Now, I will say that this is kind of not a really healthy thing to get into, but I will say it's more healthy than being upset that you got 100 less likes than last time. That's definitely more toxic. Now, an even better form of this is that when you get a lot of comments in person from your art friends, this happened with me for this post with Echo. For some reason, Instagram was just at a lull at that time of day and it did terribly the first hour. And usually the first hour determines how it's going to do for the rest of its existence. Right. But that week prior, all of my friends were like, damn, Josh, you really killed it with this piece. So I didn't really mind. I was like, you know what? I got a lot of real comments and messages from people that I, I respect and admire that I'm friends with that like this. And fortunately, it turned out I had the best of both worlds because Instagram kind of picked up and then everybody was able to see the post. Now, a fifth sign is that you realize more clearly when it's time to stop. A number one question that a lot of artists ask is, how do I know when it's finished? And that is something that you eventually learn, because one good sign is that you start to just keep multiple versions of a piece. You notice when you're at a critical turning point and you don't even have to worry when it's time to finish because you know you can just go back. And that takes maturity. And that's how you know you're improving, because deciding that, you know what, I was noodling for six hours. I'm going to go back to that six hour version <laughs> and just start over or call it finished from there takes a lot of maturity. But the fact that you can do that and the fact that you do do that is a really, really good sign. A lot of times you reach the end of a piece and I did that with Echo, honestly, and I'm just trying to make it look better. It doesn't feel like this amazing art that I want it to be, but I don't know what to do. And that's a sign that, hey, it's time to finish it. Start a new piece which what, with what you have learned. And then eventually you're going to find out what is it that that specific thing that makes other people's artwork look better than yours by doing it instead of just trying to find it and make tons of mistakes and mess up your learning process. Now, this sixth one is pretty philosophical, but I think it's really important. You start to think about how the most average person is going to be impacted by your work instead of yourself or other artists. You start to get out of the way of your own artwork and you stop caring about what other people think. And you just think about, is this piece going to do the job that I want it to do, that it's supposed to do? If you're doing freelance or you're working in a studio, is it going to do the job for the film? Is it going to do the job to help forward the goal of the game? That's what really matters. Is this going to impact somebody how I want it to? Is it going to stop them in their tracks? I'm actually working on a character now and I want when people scroll past it, 
I want them to be knocked in the face with emotion with what I want this character to symbolize. And that's my goal. I want to get out of the way of it and I want to make sure I know that if it's doing that, then I'm happy and that's all that matters. Because let's be honest, if you're online, if you're sharing your work, there's a 99.99999% chance that you're creating art for others and not 100% for yourself. So that is very important. A lot of times we think about it's all about the journey and the process, dude. You know, just chill out, man. It's don't think about the end result. And there's some wisdom in that. But in practicality, the end result is really all that matters because that's the thing that everyone else can experience, but only you can experience the process. And again, if you're only doing art for yourself, that's great. But most of us aren't. And the seventh sign is going to be that you ask people for a critique when you're happy with your artwork and not when there's a problem. It's easy to ask when there's a problem. It's easy when you want to feel like you need to do better, like it's not good enough. That happens a lot. The number one question I have when people ask for critique is any way to make it better, any mistakes, they're just concerned. But when you're like, wow, I feel happy with this. This is amazing. I'm at the top of my game. I need somebody to knock me down. I need to improve and you get addicted to that feeling that's when you know you're improving it's not easy to get there it's painful who wants to go from feeling great to feeling sad right but eventually you're going to turn those emotions around and you're not going to like it when you feel comfortable you're going to like it when you're working towards something because you know you can do it and you've done it before and it's really cool when you start to ask all kinds of different types of people because they'll give you different ideas that you would have never thought of that can really take your work to another level really quickly without you having to work for it. I've done that a few times already and it's skyrocketed the end result simply because they saw something I just didn't see for some reason and I was able to capitalize on it. So that's all I have to say for this piece here and for this topic. I really want to know if you have any ideas, any signs that you've noticed that you were improving with your art, please share them. I think this would be a great video for people to be lifted up and encouraged and feel like they can keep pushing forward because there is that section of learning art where it's really hard, where you feel like you just can't do anything right. But once you get past it, it's a lot easier to improve. But I want to help as many people as I can get past that point. And if you're interested more in this piece, let me know if you'd be interested in like a beginner's Procreate course. I'm kind of interested in doing that because I think Procreate is just such a fantastic way to break everything down and keep everything super simple. And I'm getting pretty good at these portrait type things. And I think people are really interested in it. And I will see you all in the next one. Stay positive. Keep drawing. And yeah, thank you.